Hey everyone, this is Rick from DxO Mark once again. Today we're going to do a quick dive into the world of foldable display phones, talk about some of the devices that we've already tested at DxO Mark, and take a look at what's coming. So why talk about this now? Well, after some of the innovations that recently came out at CES, we thought to start a series of videos giving you our quick take on what's new and interesting and things to look out for, and also see how we're adapting to get more information out to you. We're still going to show more in-depth reviews and analysis in other videos, and as always, if you are interested, you could read our full testing and analysis on DxOMark.com. So today, so today, so today, foldable display phones. Concepts go back to 2006, but commercially available models weren't made possible until 2018. So we've already performed detailed analysis of some of the main camera, battery, display, and audio setups on some devices and placed them in our rankings. Some devices like the Samson Z Flip, the Microsoft Surface Duo, Duo, the Samson Z Fold 2, and the more recent Samson Z Fold 3 5G. Now, some things to think about with these kinds of devices. Well, size matters. Depending on the build, you might want something smaller that would fit inside of your pocket. Or you may want something a bit bigger with a larger display, maybe for gaming, like a fold phone. Is the screen up to your level of quality? Does the crease work well with the design? What about apps? Are they supported to take advantage of the sometimes larger displays? Productivity apps, emails, calendars. Get me this thing so I can get my life in order. How does the battery fare with additional displays? And where do foldable phones sit between smartphones and tablets? There's a lot of questions that you can ask. Uh, what would you like to see with foldable smartphone technology? So ask your questions and we'll try to get you some answers. To see what may be coming, check out this concept video done by Oppo back in 2020, showing some other possibilities using sliding, folding, and making use of new display technologies. So one aspect we thought not addressed enough with foldable phones was the potential of the selfie camera. As the selfie taking experience and possibilities change with the multiple camera modules and displays and phone orientations that foldable phones can offer. We decided to perform an interesting analysis of the Samson Z Fold 3 5G, reporting on each of its three cameras, which we will make available to you shortly. The device comes with two front cameras, one in the open and the other in the closed position, but one difference between the two is that the second or inside facing camera is actually under the display. So this will affect image quality. Finally, the rear main camera can also work as a selfie camera. Our quick take. So the main camera, though the most powerful and offering excellent image quality, is not as good as the two purpose-built front cameras in terms of ease of use for selfie taking. If you have a Z Fold 3, which do you find is better for you in bokeh portraits? How about groupies? or the best in selfie video. To see how well the device performed, stay tuned as we will make our results available online soon at our website. So as with many other devices and recent and upcoming tech, including foldable phones, we have many other reports, scores, and articles at our website, dxomark.com. So make sure that you subscribe to our channel. We got a lot of great videos coming out, especially next month with all the new tech coming out. Make sure you're on top of it by clicking subscribe down below. So this is Rick once again from DxO Mark. Thank you for watching our videos and we'll see you in the next one. Au revoir to the moon. <laughs>